a long, long time ago, etc. Um, today we're going to be talking about what I think is a very fun pen. Uh, and I, I, I saw these were coming out. This is actually, I think, the second wave of pens that Cross has made that are Star Wars themed. Uh, these are fairly expensive. There's also the Schaefer Pops that have a Star Wars theme. Those are a lot more affordable. Uh, but these are, based on the Townsend model, they have a gold nib uh, and they are limited. They are more expensive. Uh, so, I mean, just, just so that people know, because I, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the, the Pops and I thought this was one of the Pops when I put it on my Instagram account, but it's, it's not. Those are very different different pens. I bought this one at Applebaum because I asked Yoast to hunt me uh, down, hunt me one down, hunt, hunt one down for me. Um, because I have a bit of a, a thing for the, this particular Star Wars character. So there was a Darth Vader pen, there was a C-3PO pen, there was, you know, all that stuff. They're all cool, but I think this one is the best. And today we're going to be talking about that one. Um, so, what we're talking about is the Boba Fett pen. Boba Fett, bounty hunter from Star Wars, if you haven't, if you don't know who he is, that's okay. It's perfectly fine. We're just going to geek out a bit for those of us who do know who he was all right here's the pen he is neat but first let's have a look at the box uh, because it's 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 supposed to be a bit of a collector's uh, uh, thing so when you open the box be careful you don't tear it he's no good to me dead um open it up it's actually a pretty neat box first thing that comes out is this box tiny box i think or maybe a bottle of ink no uh, it's a uh, tiny stand for the pen which I think is pretty cool. It comes with their own stand. I've actually been using it. Just put it on the desk, put the pen on it. Uh, it says Star Wars on one side, and it says Cross on the other side. And it's very simple. You just It has a groove. You just put the pen on it, and you just put it on your desk. So it's not necessarily the most stable thing, but it, it if you just have it stationary on a desk, it does work. And it's actually fairly heavy, so you could even use it as a paperweight or something. That's the tiny box. Then there is the box of the pen. Cross box. Uh, it's uh, this does not appear to be Star Wars themed on the outside, just like the other box. The box pops open, and then there is some stuff in there. All right, take that out. There is a little uh, sort of card. I'm guessing they're trying to make something a bit collectible uh, on on Boba Fett on the character. Uh, which which gives interesting details like a genetic clone of his father, bounty hunter Django Fat, Boba learned combat and martial skills from a young age, etc. So it's it's no, it's, they kind of tie into the the character. Uh, then there is uh, this, uh, which is a certificate of authenticity uh, with the number of the pen filled out by hand, uh, which uh, is definitely interesting. And I just check, yes, it is indeed the number that's also on the pen. Uh, so that's uh, that's always nice. Uh, and then we have uh, this uh, package. Uh, which kind of folds open. It's a, uh, a cross, I guess, standard cross uh, a booklet. I'm just trying to open this up to an interesting page with, with filling instructions and kind of the, the, the usual, usual jazz, so to speak, that you would, would get in these types of pens. Okay, uh, then the, the little um, uh, pen bed uh, in the box lifts up. There is cartridge uh, and there was, there was also a converter which had its own little uh, cardboard sleeve. So it's it's a, a very interesting package. Now, uh, there's even a, a little thing, that a little bed that keeps the pen in place because being collector's pieces, um, what if he doesn't survive? It's worth a lot to me. So, you know, it's it's those kinds of things uh, that, that I think they, that really show that they, they have geared this towards collectors and, and Let's face it, Star Wars collecting is, is huge. So, there you have it. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we will do a writing sample. Now, a lot of detail went into this pen, and this is... This is for the nerds. I'm one of them, okay? So we have to go through every little bit, and we're going to see how far we get before some people have been bored to death. Top of the pen, the finial. It's actually not just a finial. It's difficult to see, but there are grooves running up there. Uh, those grooves are, in fact, meant to represent 
those grooves in the barrel of his rifle. All right. Note how I said rifle, not blaster, because it won't to sound too nerdy. But of course, that's what it is. So they actually put that in, and it even has an opening. So it's it's almost like a, a rifle barrel, which I think is pretty cool. It has the number on there. Of course, they are limited to 1977 pens because that was the year the original Star Wars came out. This is number 191. The cap is modeled after the T-shaped visor of Boba Fett's helmet. I will show you this card again, how very useful. So you can see that in his helmet, you have that T-shape. You also have that T-shape here with the uh, the, the red uh, rims around it. These yellow dots are also on his helmet, um, which you cannot really see here. Well, actually you can a little bit on, on that side, but it's very reflective and it's not easy to see, but trust me, they're on there. Uh, so that's the the yellow uh, dashes. There is sort of battle damage they made. So there are dents and, and dings uh, which you can't see very well uh, in the, on the video, I think. But they are there. Of course, there's a standard clip uh, which is uh, neatly made into the, uh, the, the 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 descender of the the T. Here you have a uh, a Mandalorian skull. Uh, we officially should call that the Kirbes. Um, that's on his shoulder pad there, so they put that in too, which I think is kind of neat. This is on the back of his helmet, but I don't have a picture to show you, you'll have to look that up online. And of course it says Star Wars, because if it's a Star Wars product you have to brand it somehow, right? And here's some of those those dents, and I think that's one of the cool things of Boba Fett. He barely says, it says anything during the movies. But you see there's a big dent in his helmet there, it's, his armor has definitely been through a lot. So it's interesting, a lot more is suggested than is actually shown in the movie, and I think that's why he's so popular. Okay, here we have the center band, a bit of yellow in there, and then here you have some uh, uh, red lines, which is actually sort of a belt he wears, and you, uh, I don't think that's in any of the, uh, the, the packaging material, but again, look it up online, it's there. The rest of the barrel, this is the, uh, the, the front of his armor, uh, which I also can't really show you, but his, his chest armor has, has that thing on it. Uh, and then here, in relief, is right there on the back, is his jetpack which you can also see on this picture. Man, it's useful of them to supply this. So that, that thing and this is all on the back of the barrel, which I think is very cool. Then here, this is not uh, grooved. It's just a little end cap and, and that's all there's to it. Very tight capping mechanism. Very interesting. Simple section, uh, just uh, um, tapers down and then flares out in a little sort of gold colored ring and then you have the nib uh, the nib is in fact solid gold uh, it is an 18k nib uh, and it has absolutely no Boba Fett references on it so it is just a nib um, as I understand it these nibs are made by Pelican they do have some sort of scroll line work on it that I, I do kind of associate with Pelican uh, and I will say it was a very very smooth nib out of the box and for me it was fine. Aziza had some issues with it because of the way she holds the pen, the angle at which she holds it. For me it was it was actually fine which is interesting because usually for us it's the other way around. Okay, barrel unscrews. You can use cartridges or converters as you wish. Um, so standard cross converter supplied with the pen uh, works well, draws up ink, doesn't, I mean, does everything it's supposed to do. And there you have it. The only quote I can't put in here somewhere is put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. But in the same series there is a Chewbacca pen and there is a Han Solo pen and it's Han Solo in carbonite. So I guess if you buy that pen you could slip it in the box and put him in the cargo hold. There you have it. Interesting pen. Long and thin. So let's talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it. What do I like about it? It's the fat! What else can you say? I mean, if, you, if you're into that character, it's awesome. Especially because there is so much detail on the pen. And I really commend Cross for that because they really put effort into that. I, I, could, I was afraid they would only do this, this shape and leave the rest out. But the fact that it has the jetpack, it has the, the sort of the, the, the barrel of the, the rifle. There's a lot in there, which I think is very cool. Uh, very complete package, 
especially for collectors. I'm not really a collector. I just I just enjoy Boba Fett. So, but I mean, it's neat that you get the little the little card with the information. Uh, you get the desk stand, which I think is very cool. That makes it a very collectible uh, thing that you can put down. Um, and the best thing for me is it actually writes. The nib is very smooth and very pleasant. Uh, it's a medium nib. You have fine or medium. There's nothing else available. This is a medium, uh, but again out of the box very very good writer so that was definitely very interesting things I don't like so much uh, it's a skinny pen that's just because the model I picked the Townsend is a, a fairly long but fairly skinny pen so it's I prefer a pen with a bit more growth so that to me is not optimal but I, I've actually been using it quite a bit and I did find it pretty comfortable even for longer writing sessions so I was pleasantly surprised by that um, it doesn't come with the Sarlacc Pit inkwell, that is of course, that would be the ultimate accessory to sort of dip your pen into or a stand in that shape, but I guess that would make it a little bit too elaborate. I think the biggest issue is uh, uh, it's not cheap. $575, uh, that's, uh, that's a lot. And you don't get a piston filler, you do get a gold nib pen, it does write well, it is highly detailed, but uh, it's not cheap. Let's face it, it's very simple. So. Complete package, limited edition notwithstanding, uh, these are expensive pens, and that's just the way it is. Okay, so Yoast, thank you for hunting this down for me, I appreciate it because I was kind of looking forward to having one of these, and now I do. Um, that, was, that was very awesome. Um, measurements of the pen, as well as high resolution pictures, will be on the website, sbrbrown.com. I hope this was useful so far. Let's see how the pen writes, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, we would be honored if you would join us. This is the Cross Star Wars Boba Fett. Uh, the nib is a medium. The ink is SBRE Brown. Very smooth writer, very, very pleasant. A bit of fast writing. One skip there, but I don't think that's too terrible. As to wetness, nice and wet without being an ex extreme gusher. Very careful, line variation. Just a little bit. Not bad at all. Reverse writing. Possible, but as you see, it gets a little snag and then you get these weird things. So, not really meant for writing upside down, but then again, no nib is really. And that's all there's to it. So, Yoast, thank you for hunting down the pen for me. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.